a lot of brujos who are sort of like wizards and they use herbs and they do spells and stuff like this. Uh, they're kind of cool people. And uh, we go into town every once every week and we go to the, they have an herb store where they sell all these different herbs for all kinds of curative purposes and also for magic and stuff like that. So uh, you can get any kind of herbs here. And we uh, also want to grow our own herbs. Besides Tulsi, we want to grow different kinds of herbs. Um, you can't do that in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is burned out. It's becoming a desert. It's been used and abused. The river's drying up. They're dumping sewage in it. Um, you know, it's just a typical Indian, uh, you know, the, the police are corrupt and there's a lot of gangs and stuff like that, a lot of criminal activity. Here, there's no criminal activity. Well, except that the Florian got his backpack stolen out of the car yesterday. But that was our fault because we left the car open on a road in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the only criminal activity we've heard of around here. <laughs> and. Uh, there's not a lot of drug smuggling. That's, that's all in Chiapas and places like that and up north near the U.S. border. So there's not a lot of gang activity down here. Um, I mean, there's some rascal kids that go down to the river and here. That's about the, you know, about the worst thing that we've seen going on here. So it's a lot less dangerous than Vrindavan, India. Uh, the example is there were at least, I've known, known of uh, one, two, three, about five or six murders of Western devotees in Vrindavan over the last, I don't know, five or ten years. Rape. Huh? Rape. Yeah, rape and stuff like that. But there hasn't been any of that here. The, the, the village that we're in is like at the end of the road. It's like nobody comes here. You know, people leave this place alone. And the people who live here like it that way. <laughs> they like to be left alone. And it's very, very quiet. You know, but the most exciting thing that goes on here is once a month or so they'll have a block party and, and play a little disco music. <laughs> That's about the swingingest thing that goes on in this town. Um, and Benito Juarez, the, the village where we're going to move, is even better because the road is horrible. <laughs> You have to really want to go there. <laughs> but the village itself is better organized, it's prettier, it's older. Uh, and I think the people uh, are uh, more, they're more wealthy and more established. You know, everybody's got some land somewhere with some something growing on it or some cows on it. And, and they go and take care of that like twice a week and they look to support their family from that. So this is like villages we've seen in India where like people work a few months out of the year on their farm and then the rest of the time they just take off they hang out at home you know grow a little garden hang out with their kids like that it's a very very nice lifestyle very nice area and we're fortunate to be here so if, if we can bring Vaishnava values here and people respect us and the whole community basically wants us here and supports us. I mean, we haven't had anybody complain. We were talking to the mayor the other day. And of course we asked him, you know, has anybody said anything about us? Oh, everybody loves you guys. Huh? Nobody's complaining about us. So it, we've really been accepted in the sense that people just leave us alone, <laughs> which is what we want. <laughs> we just want to be here and enjoy the beautiful countryside do our devotional service without any interference. And so far, that's exactly what's happening. So I think there's no reason to think that's going to change. As long as we are very careful not to offend anyone in the community, and we just keep to ourselves and do our devotional service and don't make any trouble for anybody, we'll be welcome here indefinitely. And especially as long as we're spending money in, in the local economy and like that, um, we'll be very, very welcome here. What kind of wildlife do you see? Anything exotic or extraordinary? 
Um, well, uh, <laughs> we've seen a couple of crocodiles. <laughs> And there's these, there's these, the, the birds are amazing here. I mean, the, there's all these water birds down by the lake. And then, of course, there's the usual herons that hang out with the cows. And then there's all these songbirds. I mean, there's one beautiful yellow bird that comes and sits right on the tree next to my window and just like does this incredible song. I mean, we were up at Mr. Fernandez's place yesterday. And there was this songbird that just, ah, oh, it was just amazing, you know. And there's, there's all kinds of birds here, and they're very vocal. Sometimes it's almost too loud. <laughs> and, uh, oh, you know, the usual lizards, and uh, there's a few snakes here and there. But, I mean, really, it's mostly plant life. There's all kinds of plant life here. And you walk up anywhere into the jungle and you see all kinds of exotic plants. Oh, and the interesting thing is, people have had this land under cultivation for hundreds of years now. So everywhere you go, the jungle is like being used for cultivation, but it's not the usual Western style where they cut down everything and just plant one kind of plant. But they'll plant one plant over here, another plant over there, another plant, you know, in the places where they would do well, where they would like the, uh, the ecology. Oh yeah, and hardly anybody uses fertilizers or sprays up here. It's all organic agriculture. They do a lot of composting. And uh, so everything is pure. You can drink the water in the streams pretty much anywhere you go here, which is extraordinary. I mean, everybody hears about the, the water in Mexico, you know, don't drink the water. You know, well, here you can just go to any stream and drink the water right out of the stream, and it's fine. And I don't know of any place in India where you can do that without getting sick, except maybe way up in the mountains. So we have a, an extraordinary opportunity here. It's, it's an amazing place. It's a relatively unknown place. Uh, basically, only Mexicans come here or in, the, in recent years, now more Americans and Europeans are coming. But basically only Mexican tourists come here, like three times a year. Uh, there's three big holidays when every, every place in the whole area is booked solid. But the rest of the year, it's very, very quiet. Uh, the only time we even really ran into tourists was that one day at the, uh, at the uh, waterfall. That was so funny. <laughs> we get our drinking and cooking water from the waterfall here. So we have a couple of big jars, you know, big jugs. And you saw the, the probably you saw the video where we go up under the waterfall and fill up the jug and like that. And so one day I was just coming out of the water, you know, and these Mexican tourists come up there. <laughs> and they were looking at me like, you know, I was, you know, the thing from the waterfall lagoon. <laughs> or something, you know. They were like, you went in the water? You know, they just come to look at the water. <laughs> That's about as adventurous as they get, you know. But, um, like, I don't know, it's hard to stay out of the water. It's so beautiful. Even when it was cold, when we first got here, it was like I had to go in the water. <laughs> couldn't, help, couldn't help myself. So, uh, the tourists, you know, they're mostly from the big city and they don't really get the whole nature thing. <laughs> but the point is, this place is pure. The soil, the water, I mean the water, you go up in the mountains and the water just comes up out of the ground. Even though it hasn't rained in what? It hasn't really rained hard in about two months, you know. But still, the water is coming, and the, all the rivers are full. And I mean, it's an amazing place. So Krishna sent us here. We're very lucky. Um, we did the original research on Google Earth and sites like that. And just judging by the terrain, I knew this was going to be nice. It was going to be similar to Hawaii. But I couldn't have imagined how beautiful it is. And there aren't many pictures available either, except the ones, of course, that we have. Um, oh, and we should 
post all of those pictures of the house on the forum later today. So, any other questions? Yeah, could you describe the atmosphere as like a typical jungle? What's a typical jungle? No, it's a jungle that has been cultivated. In other words, the local people, you always see them carrying machetes. Huh? Why? Because they're always cutting down the nonsense plants and they're planting the kind of plants that they want. Huh? So everywhere you go, there's little pepper plants, there's banana trees, there's these fruits. What are those called? Those little berries? You know, there's coffee plants. Um, all kinds of useful trees, lemon trees, orange trees, and, and they're all over the place. Huh? It's like there's a lot